and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe, and our guests today are a remarkable team of social entrepreneurs from MIT, six women who have invented a device that really will be life-changing for the, the blind community. And I'm going to do my best to give you the names of the team, and I apologize if I get any of these wrong or miss anybody, and I'll ask the young women to uh, coach me should I miss. But we have with us today Jalene uh, Shi, uh, Charlene Shia, Grace Lee, uh, Tanya Yu, uh, Chadney Doshi, and Bonnie Wang. Did I, did I miss anybody? Nope. nope. Okay. Uh, I butchered a few names, and for that I apologize. But uh, I appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. We're excited to talk to you. Um, listen, uh, this really is something amazing that you've done. And I wonder, uh, Jaolin, if you would, uh, if you'd take a minute and just tell us about where the idea for your device came from. Sure. Uh, so we started this project uh, earlier this year in February. It came out of a hackathon here at MIT. Uh, called Make MIT, and what happened was the night before we were thinking of ideas, and we saw this cool article about a Braille watch. So it's a watch that will display digital time in Braille, and we thought that was really cool. And we thought about ways in which we can, you know, generalize this technology. So we thought about what if we do something that converts text to Braille um, in real time. And actually, Chani here uh, in the previous summer had worked at a blind school with assistive technology. And she you know, really knew the pain points of those who, uh, who are visually impaired and how it's really difficult to get information around them, especially since Braille is not very accessible. A lot of texts have not been converted. So this kind of uh, idea motivated our entire team. And it was something that really complemented all of our skills. So we have mechanical engineers. We have uh, computer scientists, electrical engineers on our team. And this was something that really took advantage of all of our skills. And then after the hackathon, um, we met our mentor, Paul, who's blind. And he's the one who really you know, uh, drove us to keep continuing this project. Oh, that's great. That's great. Now, uh, Grace, I wonder if you would describe the device. Uh, we got a little ahead of ourselves because we haven't really told people what it is that you invented. Yeah, of course. So we're working on Tactile, which is a portable device that allows you to scan any block of printed text, for instance, restaurant menus or meeting pamphlets or just a regular book or textbook. And basically, after it scans it, we use OCR to convert it to Braille um, actuation. And then so any, um, any person who's visually impaired can read any block of printed text. Well. That sounds like a pretty remarkable device. How much do you think it will cost, Grace? Yeah, so we're currently in the research and development stage, but we're aiming to have this device cost around $100, which will be significantly cheaper than most of the electronic devices on the market currently. Yeah, aren't most of the devices for the blind uh, $1,500 to $2,500 or more for this sort of thing? Exactly, yeah, they're in the thousands. So how did you make it so cheap? And so we're looking into other mechanisms besides piezoelectrics, for instance, microfluidics and also um, magnetic braille actuation. And so different from the technology that is currently widely used in the braille market. Very cool. Very cool. I appreciate that, Grace. Now, uh, Charlene, I want you to tell us, if you would, just a little bit more about the hackathon, since that sort of became the birthplace of this uh, wonderful idea uh, tell us about that experience and what came out of it. I understand you won uh, some sort of a prize at the hackathon. So the hackathon is the Make MIT Hackathon, so it's a specific hardware hackathon. Uh, obviously, we came into the hackathon with the idea that we want to make a text to Braille converter. So the hackathon is 15 hours. So right when we got there, we know immediately to start making because we know that 15 hours is not a, a lot, not, a, not a big amount of time to like work on this. So during that 15 hour, we ran into lots of issues. There was, uh, we got raw material. Our 3D printer uh, was already, uh, the 3D printer had a really long wait list. So we had to wait for a long time to get our material, uh, to get our part printed. 
uh, the software side, the two, the, having the OCR translated to digital text and convert into Braille, there was a translation issue. So it was lots of stuff that was going wrong on the last minute. But then 15 minutes before they call time and say that everybody done submit your project, we got it to work. And it was really slow. It printed like one letter in one second, and that's like a really slow place. But in the end, I think that was, a, that was an amazing moment where we got to work. And we took first play at the hackathon. And afterward, we got connected through MIT Global Ideas Challenge with our mentor and Paul Peruano. And we just keep going, and we just we got to where we are now. Wow. Well, that's exciting. Well, congratulations on the, the hackathon success. Now, Bonnie, you've received some support from Microsoft uh, uh, patent because they've got a program for uh, to help women, especially, get patents because the number of patents issued to women is a tiny fraction of the number issued to men. Tell us how you got into that program. Yeah. Yeah, so as showing at the Make MIT Hackathon, Microsoft was actually at the hackathon. So through the hackathon, we got connected to some mentors, mentors at the at Microsoft, and then afterwards we got involved in to imagine Microsoft competition for um, different kind of innovations. And afterwards, we the program manager got us connected to the Microsoft Patent Program. And we started since July, and it's going to be like a year-long engagement where they're going to take care of all the IP and the financial of getting the patent, and then we can just technology itself, which is what we're passionate about. Well, that's great. So has the Microsoft program been helpful to you? Yeah, it has been super helpful in terms of awareness um, ever since they helped us trying to get a patent. There has been a lot of media trying to um, help us promote our innovation. And um, it has been really great because one of the costs for is to bring more awareness to the um, assistive technology, especially for those who are visually impaired. So just be getting so much attention through the media, we really want to tell us that this is a field that needs a lot of attention. Oh, that's great. Now. Um Chadney, I wonder if you would explain to us, kind of go back in time, why on earth are you working on this? Uh, as far as I can tell, and I don't mean to be judgmental, but the six of you seem to have very good visual acuity. Why this project? Right. So as Joel mentioned before, I actually volunteered an at an organization that's developing educational applications for blind students. So as a part of my work, I actually went to a blind school in India and I just worked with the students and saw how they were interacting with the application. So it was very fascinating and kind of overwhelming to see how excited they get by technology and just working with keyboards and laptops. And then when we conducted our own research, we saw that a device like this does not actually exist already. So it was just something that we thought will be really exciting because we will get to use all our skills that we've learned at MIT, put it into this ex uh, problem that doesn't exist and hasn't been solved, and also just get something out there that can help the people who are visually impaired. So it was, it's just like a sort of buildup of like all this different stuff. Yeah, well, I appreciate the, you giving us the backstory there, uh, Chadney. Now, Tanya, where do you plan to go from here? Right, so as we mentioned before, right now we're mostly in the product development stage and doing research, but we'd really like to see this to completion, be able to come up with a viable product, uh, whether that's something that we sell or that something that we end up giving to someone, licensing out to someone else to manufacture we would really like to be able to produce something that visually impaired community can actually use and that can really bring the cost down. And I guess we're all seniors right now, so we're looking to work on this definitely for um, the rest of the year. And after that, we'll see where it takes us, where we get in our project. Now, why is the price point so important? 
So the visually impaired community is um, on average has a much lower income level than the average American household, as you can imagine, because of the impairment. So that means it's really important for us to make this so accessible. It's, we take a lot of things for granted, like it's really easy for us to read things. So it essentially costing us nothing to read a menu at a restaurant, but now it's costing them maybe a thousand dollars just so they can access most basic information. So we want to be able to make this as cheap as possible. Yeah, it really seems that you have tackled a, a problem, a kind of a chicken and egg problem. Uh, you, you can't get uh, modern technology uh, to help you with your impairment if you're blind, um, unless you have a job, unless you have income, because the devices are so expensive. And of course, it's difficult to get the job and to be integrated in fully into society without the technology and your technology if you could really deploy it for a thousand dollars, which significantly shift that situation. It would kind of solve that chicken and egg problem, don't you think? Yeah, we're definitely looking to have a huge impact and really change the way the visually impaired community can live their lives. Uh, Chadney, I wonder if you would take a minute and just tell us how you formed this team. Uh, you obviously have a, uh, one thing in common, you're all women, uh, you're all at MIT, but uh, you're in different departments, uh, doing studying different things. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how you came together as a team. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, we've all known each other since freshman year. We were in the same classes, so we've worked together and then after freshman year, when we chose different majors, we've actually stuck together, still friends, we hang out a lot. We meet almost every other day or at least twice a week to get dinner. And yeah, so we're actually a really close group of friends. And we decided to do the hackathon as just for something as fun. And then we saw that this is exciting. So we've been just working on it. Now, it's, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful project. Uh, with just tremendous potential to help. And uh, Tanya, I wonder if you would just channel for a minute the feelings of the group and tell us how you feel uh, working on this project, working as a team with these other women. Uh, what does it feel like? Yeah, so right, as Tanya mentioned, we're all really close friends. So it's really exciting in a lot of ways to um, not only for us to work on this project that we think has a lot of impact, but also the fact that we have each other as support and we know how to work with each other. We know how to um, work through things when we have problems. So it's really been a very empowering experience to be able to produce something that's grown so much more than we expected to in the beginning and to have all such great friends around us throughout the way. Charlene, I wonder if I could ask you one, one last question before you, we, we wrap up, but I wonder if you would uh, just comment for a minute on, um, you know, where you get your inspiration. Uh, I, I don't know if you think about uh, the people you'll help, if you think about the uh, people who come before you as inventors or what inspires you to keep working on this? Clearly there have been roadblocks and obstacles along the way, but what, what inspired you to keep going in spite of those things? So I think one of the things that keep us all going and keep us all working through the project is in, in knowing the social impact that it will make if we stick with it. And that's what's empowering all of us to be empowering like our passion behind the project. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Cause it really will have a tremendous, uh, a tremendous impact. Uh, Jalen, I want to ask you one final question on behalf of the group. If you would just tell people how they can get more information about tactile uh, and the team, and also maybe how they can connect with you, uh, either personally or as a group. 
Yeah. Um, so uh, we love to get all you know responses, comments, um, whatever input people will have. So I think the best way to contact us will be through our email, which can reach all six of us at once. It's tactile at mit.edu. And then if you just want general information or stay up to date about our progress, uh, you can follow um, our website, teamtactile.com. And we're also in the process of making uh, social media pages such as Twitter and Facebook. So once we get those set up, we'll definitely have a link to those on our website. So if you want direct communication, definitely email. All right. Well, team, Team Tactile, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today. It's been a thrill to, to meet you and to talk to you. Uh, you've got an amazing, inspiring story, and we congratulate you for the progress you're making and wish you every success in bringing this product to market as affordably as possible. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Now let's do some good. <laughs>